As though in a fairy tale, the gates of the ancient city of Palmyra rise up towards the heavens. This dreamlike place is located in the Tadmur Oasis, in the very heart of the Syrian savannah. The ruins look like a Fata Morgana. Surrounded by arid desert, this was once a proud and pulsating trading metropolis. And everywhere there are relics of a bygone age, of an epoch full of myth and mystique. Today only a few buildings and a number of columns remain of Palmyra's golden past. Its success was due to the caravan trains that travelled through this region. Despite the extraordinary beauty of the ancient ruins, they also possess a hint of melancholy that brings to mind the sudden and tragic end that befell this once magnificent city. The city's former centre of power, the Roman Senate building, also lies in ruins. Numerous written accounts have also helped to build up a picture of Palmyra, of the many important gatherings and political meetings that took place within this building. Due to these texts, the history of Palmyra has been preserved for posterity. The influence of the legendary oasis city grew due to it having been regarded as a province of Rome. The Romans soon recognized the strategic importance of Palmyra. It was a vital center of trade in the Near East. Palmyra's fine buildings such as its amphitheater were typical of its impressive architecture. Most of the tetrapylon has been restored. It towers high above the ancient ruins. This proud building once stood at the junction of two important streets. The Great Colonnade was once the main street of the historic metropolis. However, 
The voices of the many merchants who offered their goods for sale along this street have now fallen silent and have been replaced by the voices of a new age of visitors from all over the world. The four square pedestals of the tetrapylon once supported statues, but they did not survive the ravages of time. Alas, the important personages and images of those times that once decorated the upper part of the splendid gate complex will remain a mystery forever. The first century BC marked a decisive transformation of Palmyra's architecture. After using Babylon as a model for their city, Palmyra's inhabitants began to copy Western and particularly Hellenist architecture. Thus, several new buildings emerged. The splendid Great Colonnade was one of the first buildings of the new generation of architecture. This unique combination of Eastern and Western influences was typical of all of Palmyra's cultural buildings of that time. While its architecture was influenced mainly by Hellenism and later Roman design, religion and ritual festivals continued to follow the customs and traditions of the Orient and of the city's local tribes. The remains of a number of altars indicate that the square that accommodates the Diocletian camp was once used for religious ceremonies. However, the Romans used this area for other purposes and built a camp that served as their military headquarters. On the highest point of the complex, there was once a flag sanctuary. The Praetorium, the former headquarters of the commander of the army, was built here. 
The magnificent location of this building has given rise to much speculation that another building once stood here. The residence of Palmyra's legendary personality, Princess Zenobia. Perhaps it was once the site of her royal palace. Beyond the city walls, in the Valley of Tombs, the mystic atmosphere of the former caravan city becomes apparent. Several well-preserved mausoleums give the surreal-looking desert landscape a truly ghostly atmosphere. The architecture of these burial places that are several floors high is unique in the world. Of the hundreds of tomb towers that were once here, only a few have survived. The majority of them decayed and eventually collapsed. Others were destroyed due to various hostilities. The building material that remained was used for subsequent buildings. The sleep of the deceased was frequently disturbed by gratuitous destruction, as well as the forces of nature. such as the impressive tower tomb of El Abel, were restricted to Palmyra's wealthy upper classes. The ordinary inhabitants of the city were not entombed in this abundantly decorated building. The tomb tower of El Abel contains a wonderfully decorated interior from which the deceased could journey to the afterlife. Today, the famous Hippogaum of the Three Brothers in the southwestern necropolis of the ancient city is like a museum. As the grave lies beneath the ground, the main sections of the tomb have remained intact right up to the present day. This fascinating tomb once contained the bones of more than 300 of the dead. Thank you. 
The Baal Shaman Temple is quite different to Palmyra's other mystical sanctuaries. In addition to its varied architectural appearance that stemmed from its various building periods, this temple caught the attention of archaeologists due to a god that was once worshipped here. Yet the monarch of all heavens, Baal Shaman, was originally a Phoenician deity. The largest and most famous temple complex in Palmyra was dedicated to the Canaanian god of weather and fertility, Baal. The large temple complex was sited on holy ground. Archaeologists believe that in the 3rd millennium BC, the main deity of that time was worshipped here in what was then a small oasis village. of the last Baal temple date back to the city's first economic and cultural high season. Caravan trains and the trading of exotic goods soon made Palmyra extremely prosperous. Thus its religious buildings were beautifully embellished. Construction of this temple complex took several centuries. The buildings of the Baal temple were also used following the city's decline. Several old inscriptions tell of a man named Seldshukanamir who transformed the temple into a fortress in the 12th century AD. The large Baal temple of Palmyra was not dedicated to just one god. Statues of the moon god Aglibol and the sun god Earebol had niches here and were once worshipped by the city's first inhabitants. The examination of the temple district provided archaeologists with an important insight into the previously little known world of this ancient desert metropolis.
The wealth of this city also gave rise to much envy among neighboring tribes. So for many centuries, the city had to be protected from hostile attack. Indeed, the remains of much of the city wall can still be seen today. Palmyra's most magnificent landmarks is situated on a rock that overlooks the city. The Arabian fortress of Kalat ibn Ma'an was built long after the conquest and destruction of the city. A Drusian emir, Fakir ad-Din II, had this fortress built. Little is known of this fortress, nor had it any military significance, but it has a very romantic atmosphere and adds yet another air of mystique to the ancient city. The view from the Arabian fortress extends across the picturesque ruins of the city to the endless horizons of the desert. The oasis and ancient remains of Palmyra look almost surreal from here, as if in a dream or a Fata Morgana. But the old ruins and the mighty fortress within this arid desert area really do exist in a very tangible and resplendent form. At the time of the city's most famous inhabitant, Princess Zenobia, the rock was just a rock. The fortress could not have prevented the downfall of the Palmyrian realm. The princess's hunger for power was such that she plotted against her husband and son and had them both murdered. In 273 AD, the glimmering and fairy tale like city of Palmyra was occupied and subsequently destroyed by the Romans. There are numerous theories as to what befell Princess Zenobia. Perhaps she was forced into slavery, was imprisoned, or committed suicide. Who knows? But one thing is sure following her dastardly deeds, the city fell into rapid decline.